You just need to make sure that with your teammates, you can play together and you can win together. That's the difference between courageous leaders and a bit more conservative leaders. And more conservative leaders always find an excuse why the next technology wave is not the right thing for them. Welcome to the GBS Masterminds podcast, season three. CIOs are from Mars, GBS leaders are from Venus. My name is Sashi Narhari, founder and CEO of Hyradius, and I'll be your host. Today, we have two amazing guests, Ingo, who is a CIO at Fresenius, and Robert, who was recently a GBS leader at Novartis. We'll kick off the debate with their introductions. Ingo, do you want to go first, and then Robert? Yeah, thank you for having me. My name is Ingo Elfring. I'm the CIO at Fresenius group, a healthcare conglomerate. Before that, I worked at GlaxoSmithKline, Bayer, and a spin-off from Rackett Benkiza. I'm uh, Robert Elvin. I've been in the world of GBS for the past 20 years, uh, working most recently at Novartis as the GBS leader there, and before that at Syngenta as the GBS leader. CFO as a background, but uh, really worked in GBS most of my career. I'm passionate about it. All right. We are super excited to have you both and we'll kick off the debate. The first question for you, Ingo, as a CIO, a lot of business leaders refer to their IT departments as the office of the no. They feel that IT puts everything else on the back burner because they're busy upgrading and migrating existing systems like SAP Oracle. What are your thoughts on this? Yeah, for me, it's important that IT is refocusing. IT used to be a function where you have these large-scale system upgrades. And I think technology is much more important in today's digital world. And that's why the IT department needs to play an active role in technology. Maintaining the old large-scale systems, they are important. They run the business today. They run the core processes of a company. But a part of a technology organization that is looking forward also needs to focus on this newer experience, how to become a digital customer experience, how to really drive things at a very fast pace with releases and new functionality on a weekly or monthly basis with A-B testing, with the option to really understand what end users really like. That to me is a challenge in an IT organization to be both things at the same time. The concept of two-speed IT comes to mind. You have to be an organization that specializes in multiple different aspects Understood. So the two-speed IT sounds like a very interesting concept, Ingo. Do you think it's possible within the same IT department? Because a lot of times speed and culture kind of go hand in hand. I'm just curious your thoughts. Yes, I do think it can be in two, two speeds in the same IT department, but you need very different type of people for that, right? The leaders that can run a large-scale IT operation probably aren't the same that really go out with the nurse and identify how to make a patient experience in a hospital a better patient experience on what might contribute to that. The IT department as a whole can have these different leaderships and leadership sub-teams in them. And as a leader of an IT department, I need to bring that into the organization. I need to find people that can drive these different aspects of IT. Got it. All right. So the next question is for you, Robert, as a GBS leader. A lot of times the business teams are perceived as the office of the fairy tale. They desire the latest and the greatest technology, but they're not ready to put their skin in the game by committing to a business case or an ROI. What are your thoughts? As a GBS leader, I've always thought of myself as a business leader running my own business. And to be part of running a business, of course, is also investments in technology. But as you run your own business, you have to put your money where your mouth is, and you have to hold yourself accountable for the investments that you make. As I've never looked at technology investments as being freebies. I've always looked at them as something that I make a deliberate choice on investing in, money, time, uh, resources. And like any other business investments that you make, you like to see a return. There's also business leaders who are more functionaries, uh, who are more working within a silo, and who do look at and IT is something that's free and that's something that is they're entitled to. I think that's the wrong approach. I think as a business leader, you have to behave like a businessman. Got it. So maybe, Robert, do you feel like some of these modern tech stacks that, let's say, you think can drive digital transformation, do they get rejected a lot of times because you have to take a risk and sign up for a business case that you're not comfortable? Or a lot of times when it gets drilled down to the next level, maybe the mid-management, 
and they are not ready to deliver. So how does it play out in a, in a large company? I think there's indeed two aspects to it. There's always more ideas in a large company than you can actually deliver on, uh, financially, resource-wise. So there's prioritization. And prioritization is hard. And prioritization means sometimes you do not invest in those latest, greatest technologies because you need to maintain your legacy stack because otherwise it falls over, right? That, that happens. That's reality. So I think that, that prioritization is one aspect. I mean, as, as a courageous GBS leader, as a courageous business leader, you have to think forward. You have to think what is really, really in the best interest of the firm, of the company, more so than in the best interest of myself and my team. You got to think of the company first. Another aspect for sure, as you, as you rightfully point out, Sashi, is, is there is some conservatism. There is some, well, what is this going to mean for my job, for my team? And do I really want to embrace it? Uh, or am I going to lose budget? Am I going to lose status if I make this investment? Uh, but these would be, in my mind, the less courageous leaders who think like that. Uh, I mean, as, as a courageous GBS leader, as a courageous business leader, you have to think forward. You have to think what is really, really in the best interest of the firm, of the company, more so than in the best interest of myself and my team. You got to think of the company first. Got it. Next question for you, Ingo. I have a lot of friends in like tech companies like Amazon, Google, and Facebook. And of course, they, a, a, they're rich companies and they have deep pockets for IT spend. But they also actually run a lot of hundreds of projects in parallel. Traditional large enterprises spend most of their budgets in the ERP, SAP, Oracle kind of stack. But only a very fraction, small fraction to maybe like kind of like experiments or transformation. What is the way out of this? I want to connect to what Robert said before that. The key component in all of this is that you'd not talk about the IT department as a primary function, right? You talk about what you achieve as a business primarily. And the IT department has some keep the lights on job to do. Unfortunately, in some cases, these are rather large and costly and expensive keep the lights on activities that you need to do. But the most of the discussion has to be on partnering with the business. And as an IT leader at multiple levels, this is not just the CIO, but also your team underneath you and probably the level under that, depending on the size of the organization, take your position as an equal partner at the table and say, here's what I can contribute to the business. And then don't worry if the budget is in your budget or if it's in the business. You just need to make sure that with your teammates, you can play together and you can win together, that you bring something to the table, that you have expertise and that other people want to work with you to be able to utilize that capability and that insight. And then the money will flow. And if you become too focused, if the money flows to your department and to your kingdom, then I think you have to review your position there a little bit to make sure that what you're doing is primarily focused on achieving the business results. Got it. Robert, do you have any thoughts? Yeah, what do you got? I think you have to look at what is the best business result sometimes. And I've been guilty of that myself, is that you see companies sort of get into the mode of, of benchmarking their spend, um, benchmarking how much they spend on IT, how much they spend on R&D, how much they spend on marketing, how much the sales, and then try to force themselves within that average. But what you then do you actually force yourself into a mold where you cannot really compete on differentiation anymore. Whereas what you really should do as a business is you should say, how do I best compete in this industry? And if that means I'm going to overinvest in technology and maybe spend less on marketing and sales, then that might be the best business decision. Absolutely. So I'm just curious then, Robert, so what could be holding your team back from maybe technology investment decisions easier by committing to more aggressive business case or ROI? Is it a fear of failure? Sometimes there could be conflict of interest. Could also be a lack of confidence in the technology vendor or the implementation vendor. As a business exec, how do you think about this? Well, let's say as a GPS leader, you know your job is productive and that means you have to embrace anything that can help you drive productivity, whether it's Lean Six Sigma, technology, whatever helps you drive productivity. Now that's of course, easier said than done, because at the end of the day, if you run a, a GBS shop, productivity typically means impacting uh, people's jobs. And that's where it can get a bit painful, uh, especially at the, the middle management level, where you look around and say, well, this is my team. And if I implement this technology, my team is going to be halved. Uh, so is that a good idea? But something that you have to phase into as a GBS leader and say, how do you help your teams through that? And how do you look to expanding the scope and expanding the remit of the GBS organization so that 
technology is less of a threat and more of an opportunity to take on additional work. And in many cases, people and leaders get stuck within the, this is my thing at the moment, this is my scope at the moment. Let's be careful with shaking it up too much. Eh? And again, for me, that's the difference between courageous leaders and a bit more conservative leaders. And more conservative leaders always find an excuse why the next technology wave is not the right thing for them. Kind of a good old don't rock the boat if you don't have to, I guess. There you go. Ingo, what are your thoughts? Yeah, in a similar way, I do think technology over the last 40, 50 years has brought many, many innovations to bear. And a lot of things that used to be done by humans are now better done from an end outcome perspective, from customer experience, from cost-based perspective by technology. And you know, if we stick to the old, then we will ultimately be run over. I think you're better off trying to embrace change in an appropriate way, recognizing the people aspects, recognizing the change and the human aspect of that change management. We will see new technologies. And if you get into that discussion of what is right for the business, how do we make it better for our customer? How do we create profitability for our business? Then we have a business to run and we can ultimately deliver the benefit of that business. And that's what counts, not the is my team the same size or is my team the same budget as next year? That is fearful. And I think we all need to embrace change, technology change. COVID has shown that in many industries over the last two years, that if you embrace it, you ultimately find better solutions. Got it. And Robert, your thoughts on the ownership of tech investment? I mean, obviously the business and IT have to come together, but how do you think about the roles and responsibilities? I see a, a clear delineation actually between IT and the rest of the business where the business should be held responsible for delivering the business case that comes with the tech investment. Uh, so if the tech investment drives productivity within GBS or drives additional sales within the commercial team, then the business leaders should be held accountable for delivering that business case. Whereas I look at the IT team as being the team who holds the architecture and the IT team of course should be the people that actually deliver the technology in close collaboration with the business teams from a requirement and from a customer perspective. That was the GBS Masterminds podcast. For more information, visit gbsmasterminds.com and make sure to search for GBS Masterminds in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or anywhere else podcasts are found. Click subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. And on behalf of the team here at High Radius, thanks for listening.